of becoming a, a, a good fluctuator of foreclosures? Anybody? Charlene, you could go. Yes, um, I'm licensed in Texas. And is there are some companies you can um, refer me to in Texas? Uh. Well, I mean, if you're in Texas, then I would definitely go to Five Star in Dallas because you're right there. And I don't know how close you are there, but with us, we have, I know Five Star is, I think, I don't know if Sonia joined this year, but it was something like 1495 or something like that. But we had to get hotel rooms and, and uh, airfare. So, you know, if you're in Texas, I would go no matter what, just because you're right there and join the, you know, Five Star and learn the experience and, It'll just benefit you for maybe getting some listings because there will be a lot of Texas as well. So it's you know a big state, and um, you're probably going to get a decent amount of foreclosures there as well. But it's very easy for you to go. I liked Five Star better than REO Mac. REO Mac was in San Diego. I think more uh, attendees went to Five Star. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you take that out? So I've got a question here. Oh, go ahead, Sonia. You were breaking up. Go ahead. Oh, I have a question. So I um I signed up to be um an asset manager for Chase, I believe mm -hmm. it was. Um, so I am on their list already. So when I go to Five Star, I'll just go up to the booth and still introduce myself to, hey, I'm already signed up. I'm in your system. I haven't received any leads or anything from them yet, but just to introduce myself so that they can put a name with a face, basically. Correct. Yep. Okay. And um, I've been working on a lot of foreclosures, but what I've been working on here is um, working off of the Broward County um, foreclosure calendar for people that have sale dates. And so I've been picking up listings that way as well. Is there anything that you can um, give me some nuggets that may assist me working with um, customers that have sale dates? Well, um, well, First of all, that's you're talking about the court uh, in the courts. Mm -hmm. um, have everything prepared because that sale date comes up quick. And if you don't have it ready and know that you have to go do an extension at the court, then it gets to the you know foreclosure. And what we do, and I team up with a partner of mine, we have a, um, a ref, you know reserve in the uh, Broward County Courthouse. So we actually look at them, what's coming up, let's say on Monday or Tuesday, we look at about six or seven that are coming up. If we like two or three, then we'll give them to our title company. They'll pull up all the title to make sure that we're buying the first mortgage or second. And then if we like any, we'll go drive that property and put a bid on it. So we actually buy a lot from the foreclosure uh, courthouse, and they will be getting more and more coming up after March 11th. Um, but yes, it, that's great to get the listings, but you have to be fast and you have to be quick and, and know that you might have to do the due diligence to go to the courthouse and make it extend. Thank you, Sonia. I think she has another question. So um, I, you, you're correct about that. I did pick up um, a listing and I'm picking up another one. I picked up another one, I think, today. Well, they have the paperwork. So we had a, a, a sale date of March 12th, I think it is. Mm -hmm. So we do... Um, we're doing a Zoom on Monday in front, in front of the court um, to mm -hmm. extend it. We already are under contract because I listed it already. And the same thing with this new one that I'll be picking up. They have a sale date of April 2nd. So I'll have to list it, get them under contract, and then probably go before the courts again. Correct. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. So I'm doing great. Okay. Thank you. Yep. What, no problem. Thank you, Sonia. What, what are your thoughts on, somebody's asking, what are your thoughts on the commissions? Uh, the commissions that are what you rephrase it a little bit better. What kind of commissions? I can't hear you, Claudia. You're muted. Um, Jeffrey, if you want to unmute, um, but until he comes, because I think somebody asked him the question, what was his thoughts on commission? I don't know if he's talking about the NAR lawsuit or maybe sometimes I know with the REO management properties we you know the commissions well, are i mean with the you know with the commissions you really can't like i do a discount on my commission just because we have a lot of properties that help me get listings so a lot of people like that but with the reos what they have they don't really have 
um, lower commissions. It's usually around the five, but they'll have a uh, processing fee uh, of uh, $150 or something just to pay for the software. So um, that would be it. It wouldn't be too much of an REO commission lowered just by, you know, that uh, the banks. <clears throat> and on with the lawsuit, I mean, that's just hit or miss. I mean, if you get someone that really follows up on the lawsuit and they want to go lower, then obviously a lot of people aren't going to show that property if you're giving away just 1%. Yeah. So, you know, the, the property is never going to sell. No one's going to show it. All right. I think there was a quandary that had her hand up. Yes, thank you. Um, I service uh, Northeast Florida, primarily Jacksonville, and I'm actually on the website, and I just saw that there was a conference held on February 20th. Is there another conference um, which that you would recommend that I should attend since I missed this one in Orlando? Uh, which one was held in uh, Jacksonville? I, I think uh, uh, Off a Pad was on February yesterday. Is that the one you told uh, yeah. me about? It was one. It was one that was held in Orlando, Florida. Had been a night's nice reception. I'm looking at the website here for the conferences. I don't know which one was in Orlando. I know Jacksonville had off the pad had a big conference. Got it. Okay. The ones, um, that, the, the big, big ones are uh, REO Mac, Five Star, and REM University, a VRM University, and okay. uh, Five Star is in Dallas and. Um, REO Mac has been in San Diego. I think they went to Miami. And then the other ones for the institutional is IMN. Okay, got it. So regardless of where they're being held at, these investors and these group of people are just coming in from everywhere, all parts of the states. So right. is, okay, got it. Yep. Thank you. And then they'll, they'll either have boots or they'll have breakout sessions where you want to meet them. All right, thank you for that, Quandra. Uh, Go ahead, Marshall. So John, you mentioned we should stand out with these asset managers. Once they reach out to us, is there anything different from the regular um, listing appointment that we should know that they're looking for? Anything specific to doing the uh, foreclosure sale? Uh, yeah, it's a lot different. You know, you won't really... What you'll be doing is tasks. So you'll be doing a BPO, such as CMA. You'll go look at the property. You'll upload the pictures. You'll, good chance that you're going to be changing the locks with a locksmith. Um, get in a lockbox. Um, if you see house that needs to be, you know, maybe new carpets or paint, you they're going to ask you for a bid, what they need to get it ready. You'll have to get that bid. You'll end up getting a vendor. You'll probably lay out the money. And then you pay the vendor, you'll get reimbursed in 30 days. And so it is a, a lot more work and a lot more process. It came to the point where I ended up trying, doing my own locks instead of hiring a locksmith because it was getting so overwhelming. They would charge $150 to $200. I can do it myself at this point. So we ended up doing it ourselves and still, you know, basically you charge the bank back. So it's a lot more work and you just have to have everybody in process. You need a vendor, a contractor, um, a locksmith, pitcher guy, and knowing how to bid where you're going to get the bank to know that there are a certain amount of work that needs to be done for this to be, you know, more uh, lender ready. And then you'll have to lay out the money if it ends up. There was times where there was. Uh, I think uh, I think it was either Fannie Mae or Twenty Four Asset. I, they owed me like eighty seven thousand dollars at one point. So, you know, you do have to lay out the money and kind of keep it all together, where you you know that you've got to pay them because the vendor's not going to wait thirty or forty days. Go ahead, Kayla. Hi, John. Thank you so much for doing this, and happy okay. um, happy Thank birthday. You. So two questions for you really quickly. The first one was regarding the um, Broward County property appraiser site. You said to go on. I didn't catch the steps on how to get the LLC's number. And the second question was, let's say, for example, if we were to find a deal, do you have the opportunity to partner up with you just so that we can um, kind of like shadow and learn and then, you know. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm always... I always answer my phone. I always here to, you know, talk or if you have anything that you need help on, um, you can always give me a call and, and present it and I'll I'll let you know what are the steps that you would need to take. Sure. 
Um, and the BCPA, where are you where are you located? Fort Lauderdale. Okay. So yeah, when you get those, I mean, it's a lot harder of a work to find phone numbers. Mm -hmm. So even though you find where they are, I am not, I have my, my partner, Kevin is way better than I am. I, I give him some of them. I'm like, Hey, find me this number. And you know, you just, you got to do a lot of homework on trying to find that number and who the right person is. So it does take a lot of time and experience on trying to find that person's number and, you know, hopefully they want to have a conversation with you. So uh, there's a bunch of ways like white pages and all of that kind of stuff where you would have to buy it. I think it's a, maybe a subscription for a year or so, and then they give you everybody's number and, you know, in that kind of way. So it, it takes, a, it's a lot of effort and I actually don't do it as good as my friend Kevin does. He finds numbers left and right. But so, you yes. were saying to go on the property appraiser's website and- Well, you, well if you find, let's say you find- uh, you know, uh, some LLC and you put in that LLC into the owner's name and all of a sudden he owns 300 homes. Well, you know that there's a good chance that you want to try to meet that guy okay. or that person or that company to say, hey, uh, you know, is it time to sell? Do you want to sell? I can get top dollar. Maybe you want to sell five homes, 10 homes. You know, all your, your presentation of how to approach it is what you want to do when you get that person on the phone. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to mention, too, if you need step-by-step -step, um, instructions, Kayla, I know Sonya is doing a lot of that groundwork, so you may want to um, ask her for some suggestions as well. Go ahead, Angelique. She's muted. There you go. Good day. Thank you so much. Um, just a real quick question. Are you seeing that it's very similar to 2008 and so forth? Is it basically no, the same? How, not is as it much. Easier? No, it's not going to be that crazy. Okay. So, I, I mean, just, I mean, from That's then. The, the banks failed and the mortgage lenders failed. Here, you're going to have just people not affording the mortgage. Right. So what I'm talking about from the prospect of being, you know, in the foreclosure um, system here with all these different like five star and so forth, it, you don't think there will be as many foreclosures as what you're saying? And also, I want to know as far as because I know there was money that was being sent out. We had to put money aside in some cases to get some of these foreclosures done. Like some of the things you're saying now. So we're going to see a lot more of that. Like yes. when it started, you didn't have to put out a lot of money you know, just the basics. And all of a sudden now you're paying and now you have to keep track like it's a whole separate business. Are we seeing that now? You won't see it right away. I mean, you might see it later on in a year or so. But again, if you don't put aside the money to pay for every software every year, every year, you don't put aside money where you have capital to spend for the vendor to go out and fix the property that you got to lay out because that vendor is not going to want to wait 30 days to get paid that a bank's going to pay you the 30, 45 days. So you want that behind as well to know that, okay, if you get five properties, you need you need some capital behind it to support it. Right. But yes, okay. without without going into the softwares, uh, such as, you know, uh, Equator and ResNet and Aspen iAgent, you're not going to really get anything. No problem. I didn't hear you, Claudine. Anybody has any more questions for the number one agent in all of our company? We got some new people on here. Welcome. I saw a uh, German on here. He just onboarded. Um, we're moving in a great direction. And so I just wanted to welcome the people on here. I saw Jeannie on here earlier. I see her now. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And a few others. I see Mr. Barry. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, listen, guys, we're talking about the number one agent, guys, in listings. I, I have a question in the chat box to find people behind the LLC. Take the LLC. Oh, he's just telling you how to find the, L the right. owner of the LLC. Um, and he's absolutely correct. Yep. So look at that information in the chat box. You will find the names behind the LLC and their addresses. 
Um, this is if it's not, you know, double layered and a trust and da 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 da, da right? Um, those are some of the sophisticated investors. Take those names and addresses and then skip trace them. Um, uh, the companies that you can research for the LLCs for you. Yes, you can do that. All right. Anybody else? Nobody has any questions. You got any more tips for us, John? No, I think I uh, answered a lot of questions. I kind of gave you enough information to kind of get as many listens as you can in that kind of sense. And, uh, you know, I just, I hope, like I said, I'm here to help. And, you know, this, I hope everybody can make the, a good amount of money and be happy. All right, go ahead, uh, Marie Jean. Yes, I, I have a quick question. Um, you mentioned that you have some properties that investors release for sale. Um, those of us that have buyers that's looking for properties, is there a way that we can connect to see if you have any properties that fit our um, our criterias? Are you in, I guess, in the Southeast Florida area? Yes, in North, um, yes, in the South Miami area. Yeah, well, I use the Miami Realtor Board. So if you either want to put our broker code or my name in there, it'll probably give you, you know, the 30 or 40 that I have. Okay, that'll work. Thank you. And, uh, just to let you know, I'll give you the office because we're actually a broker EXP office. And that code is uh, EXP P08. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. Let me tell you, we want you to become successful. We want yeah. you to wait. What platform should we sign up with? We'll give you that list, Amber. We have a long laundry list. We will we will curate a list and get it out to everyone on the call this evening. If you've not registered and you somehow got the link, I'm going to put the registration link in here just so that you can be a part of getting uh, the list, Realtor Tools for Success. Dot com. Make sure you're registered at that website. Uh, I don't know if Crystal's still here, but if she could just drop the linkable link in here, that would be great. Guys, listen, times are going to change. Mm -hmm. Okay, you need to be... When I got into this real estate business 23 years ago, they trained me, and I didn't understand it because it was it seemed like it was so easy to work with buyers, but they drilled us day in and day out, day in and day out. Get on the listing side, get on the listing side, get on the listing side, and now we're up at about 7% commission on the listing side. So now, guys, and 10% in the commercial space. So you got to make sure, okay, you are a listing agent, right? Being a buyer's agent is, is cool too. But if you have the listing, you have more potential to make more money. You've got more potential to meet more people that will create more money for you because that's a new lead generation. Think about it. Give the seller and the buyer in a listing transaction or in a, in a transaction. Now you have two potential places where you can get more referrals from. OK, and it's happening. It's happening already. I've got a ton of ref uh, uh, offers right now. Claudia, we don't have an agent. We want you to represent us. And I don't even have to do the offer. They're doing the offer and sending it to me and saying, Claudia, be our representation. And so it's happening. It's, it's, it's happening. So you want to be in the way of money. You want to be in the way of money. Did y'all hear 45 listings? Is this only in February? Did y'all hear that? I know Jeff heard it. Did y'all hear it? Y'all heard it. Did you hear it? And I think Jeff is like at 16 already. And so, guys, listen, it's very important. I see Sonya day in and day out looking for the foreclosures, calling the people, looking for the addresses, knocking on the door to the resident. You know, you're going to have to do, okay? You're going to have to do what you need to do to get it done. There are thousands of agents that did not renew their license this year. Yep, thousands of agents. Thousands, yes. Correct. They're quitting. They're, They're getting part-time jobs. Quit too. They waiting for me to quit. I yes, know they're they waiting for John to quit. Yeah, they're waiting. Soon, don't worry, I'm going to retire before I quit first. Right. <laughs> they're just waiting. <clears throat> Guys, and guess what? 
It's not that John is amazing. It's not that Claudia is amazing. It's not that Angelique is amazing. It's not that Sonya is amazing. It's not that you guys are amazing. It's because you kept going. It is simply because you kept going. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is just confirmation because every year I think about all these fees that I'm paid for all these different systems. Equa Remember Equator, Angelique, when we had to do short sales? Oh, my God. Yep. Way back when. And I'm thinking, man, should I release? Should I just not pay for this? Because we're not really getting any business from it. And I'm today was a good day for me. And I'll tell you why. Because John just reassured something for me. Stay in the game. Stay putting that money there. Because guess what? Everybody else canceled their subscription. And I don't know if you remember this, John, but they even got a little like wise. that They started sending me all the assets in my immediate area. Like I was the, the queen of assets in my immediate area. Guys, I don't know about you, but our immediate area is 800 and above right now. 800 and above, 1,000. Mm -hmm. So listen, I see John says he's enjoying helping people. I'm excited. So Charlene Garrett has a question. Let's bring her up. Hey, um, Claudine. Um, I can't register on the Real the Realtor for Two Success website for some reason. That link does not work for me. Okay, inbox me your phone number and I'll get it over to you. Okay, I'll do it now. All right, excellent. Thank you. All right, guys. If I were you, I, I'd be. I, this whole chat room should have been. Let me tell you something. When you get somebody like John Scalia on the call, you be the first to raise your hand. You be the last to raise your hand. But if we don't have any more questions, I guess we can finish early today. I guess we can finish early today. I guess we can finish <laughs> early today. Amber, oh, there, has here, a come, here come a couple. Go ahead, Amber. Um, I did have a question. I know you said something about your forty, the forty-five listings that you have now. Are yeah. those also, um, you said you have like institutional buyers, so a lot of them are with like some of the same core buyers, I mean, sellers or? Correct. Yeah, I probably a good uh, 20, 30 of them are, yes. Okay, so then that, that's the relationship you built kind of over time with the asset managers that can go into conferences? Correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and I'll share a good story with you guys. The, the one... It seems like in that REO space back in 06, 07, 08, like nobody wanted to give you the deets on how to do anything, right? right? And I remember the broker, my broker at the time where I spent 20 years at one company said, you know what? I'm going to take the top producer out of the office. It was with Wells Fargo at the time. And, and they appointed me to be an REO broker. And then it just kept, it was a ripple effect. It was like the people in the inside were whispering and talking. Um, and then go to some of these conferences. Like yeah. there's a story that Sharon McLennan tells all the time because she was in the room. Um, Fannie Mae made her a, 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 a REO brokerage right on the spot. Everybody that was in the room at that conference became a broker of REO. So guys, this is a very, very big deal. Very, very big deal. So. I'm just excited. I'm just very, very excited to be here. Guys, always be in the room. Always be in the room. And let's yep. go. Get in front of people. Wherever you go. At a restaurant, at a bar. Say hello. How are you? You know, can I help you with anything? You know, always talk to as many people as you can. Hi, John. It's Marshall. Hey, so I hear you talking about retiring. I'm going to do the work. I want you to see me working. But when you get ready to retire, can you pass those numbers on? I will. I will. I promise you. I'll be in the mountains. You're just relaxing. Don't worry. But this is very fun for me. So it's tough for me to retire. All right. Well, John, we're going to let you go. It. Thank we're you very much for having at me. This time. But if you have any final words, just if you have final words that you just want to share with us tonight, 
Well, like, like I said, I mean, you did a great job, but I, you know, I always answer my phone on almost every call. Uh, it's always an opportunity on the other side. You know, wherever I go, I try to talk to anyone if it's at a restaurant or bar or movie theater or so on. And, you know, you, you just say hello, give out your card and, and try to do something productive to help get that other lead or that referral that you can do. So my main objective is even people in my office are like, why do you answer the phone to everyone? But I've been doing it every time. It's, it's I have earplugs still. So it's very hard for me not to answer the phone. And, you know, that's my main one of thing is just, you know, uh, that opportunity, that phone call could be an opportunity for another investor or someone else. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all wish him another happy birthday. Light up the chat box with a happy birthday to him. Listen, I don't listen, want too many listen. of them. I'm getting old. I don't want too many. I gotta go back. I gotta go backwards. Yes. Thank guys, you, guys. That's our time. Love, peace, and what? Real estate. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.